Hello and welcome to the Bigger Than Us podcast. Today's guest, we have Arun Gupta, CEO of Skyvent Technologies. Arun, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Arun, I want to get out of the gate with that interesting statistic you sent me earlier this week. Can you share it with the audience? Yeah, absolutely. So something like 20 to 30% of all fuel burned on the face of the earth is burned for industrial process heat. That's the heat used to manufacture all of the stuff around us, everything that we all consume on a daily basis. So that's that's more than all of the cars and trucks on the road on the entire planet combined. It's huge, and yet no one knows about it. Uh, when I because because I, I focus on this sector, when I go out and talk to people about it, people think. Oh, that, that sounds like an interesting, tiny little niche market. That doesn't sound very big, though. Uh, and we're talking something like a trillion dollars a year. So that's, that's pretty big. Trillion with a T. Trillion with a T. Yeah. So, so give me an example of what you mean by this manufacturing, uh, just so I can kind of wrap my brain around it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, industrial process heat is everything from what you might expect, uh, which would be the heat used to melt and smelt steel. But it's much, much, much more than that. So Mm -hmm. it also includes heat to do things like pasteurize milk or bake all of the bread that you find in the grocery store. Uh, It's also the heat used to separate gasoline from crude oil. Um, It's the heat used to separate uh, copper ore from, uh, sorry, sorry, copper from the copper ore that's mined. So it's many, many things. So, So what happens to this heat right now, I guess, in the process? So right now, uh, what you'll find is you go to the edge of town, you go to the industrial district, you've got some huge factories out there, and they they oftentimes have big smokestacks. And so you might think Mm -hmm. of them in terms of air pollution. But what's happening inside those factories is that fuel is being burned uh, in order to produce heat, in order to manufacture items. So again, to smelt steel or to pasteurize milk. Uh, mm-hmm. And so the fuel is, is burned. It, it's hot, of course. It produces heat. Uh, and then uh, that heat, once it's used, is lost. It's thrown away. So it just it's lost into the atmosphere, uh, and it represents an enormous waste in our society. So is this similar to, let's say, for example, just for layman's understanding, like the exhaust heat that comes out of the back of a car? It is similar. It is similar. Um, Just like a car, uh, the car burns fuel and some of that fuel is converted into mechanical energy to move the car down the road. But a vast Mm -hmm. majority, something like 70 percent of it goes out the tailpipe in heat. And it is it is very similar in the industrial space where some of it is some of that heat is being used to actually pasteurize the milk. But the rest of it's being lost. So what does or what does your invention or what does Skyven Technologies do with this heat? So we do two things with heat. The, the first thing is we focus on deploying technologies that capture that heat and reuse it or re-inject it back into the plant. Uh, so, for example, uh, A large factory will have gigantic boilers. We're talking boilers that would fit inside of um, an auditorium classroom, like huge boilers. Okay. Uh, And these boilers are burning tremendous amounts of fuel uh, every every hour of every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, While... Uh, much of that heat that's produced is getting converted into steam to power the plant. Uh, Mm -hmm. Depending on how old the boiler is, 15 to 40 percent of that heat is just being lost out of the smokestack. Uh, And so capturing that heat can be as simple as installing a heat exchanger uh, on the smokestack to to take the heat out of that exhaust and use it to heat water. Uh, this, this sort of thing is being done 
a little bit today, but the opportunity is much, much greater. And so we one, one of the things we focus on is capturing heat that's lost, like, mm-hmm. like on a boiler. And the other thing you were saying? The other thing we do is there's another form of heat that every plant, every industrial factory in the world has that mm-hmm. very, very, very few are actually using. And mm-hmm. that's the heat that falls on the roof uh, from the sun. Okay. We have an enormous ball of fire that rises above <laughs> everybody in the sky every day. Mm-hmm. And it's hot. We all know the sun is hot. Mm-hmm. But the sun We're is in not. Right now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hot outside. I'll tell you that. Um, it's not hot enough on your skin to do things like pasteurized milk or bake bread. Mm-hmm. So we have developed a proprietary technology that captures that heat and raises its effective temperature uh, mm-hmm. as high as 400 degrees. Uh, and we we take that heat and inject it into the plant uh, in order to reduce the amount of fuel that needs to be burned. So if I understand correctly now, on the first example you gave, you're able to take this heat and re- inject it into the manufacturing process, thereby the current temperature or the current air temperature in this process, you're saving the fuel from raising that temperature. Is that correct? That's correct. So can you give me an example of what kind of savings a manufacturer could see you know, by installing one of your technologies? Yeah, a manufacturer will typically reduce their fuel consumption by mm-hmm. roughly 20%. Uh, mm-hmm. And that includes reducing the amount of money that they're uh, that they're spending on fuel by 20 percent. So uh, in a large factory where they're spending millions on fuel, uh, mm-hmm. the factory can save one hundred thousand dollars a year or more. So it sounds like they would do a, you know, a CapEx investment into a um, in, into one of your technologies and then it will save them in the OPEX down the road. Is that correct? That's traditionally been the way it's it's done. And mm-hmm. so the other innovative aspect of our business is rather than charging customers for the equipment that we deploy uh, mm-hmm. on a capital basis, we charge customers for the heat that is produced and or recovered on a per BTU basis. Uh, so customers don't pay any capital. We, we give them a free system. So we design it for them. We, we, we buy the equipment, we install it, and we make sure it's operating. We even pay for maintenance. Uh, in exchange, we ask our customers to sign an agreement where mm-hmm. they agree to purchase the, the BTUs that are recovered uh, that, and delivered to them at a rate that's lower than they're already paying for fuel. So in that way, there's no capital expense and there's immediate savings on OPEX. That's pretty inventive on your behalf. And just a side note, you mentioned BTU twice. Um, the play on words we're using for Bigger Than Us is BTU because we are energy fans. So thank you for bringing that up. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. So um, tell me, Arun, why is Skyven so important to you? What drives you to do this? Well, I look out, I look out the window, you know, I read the news and we live in a great world, but we live in a world where there are lots of problems. And I believe it is my mission in life. It's, it's my purpose on earth to do everything that I can do to try to help solve some of those problems. Uh, and the problems out there are pretty substantial. So I ask, what, what can I do? I'm just one person. What can I do? Uh, mm-hmm. And Skyven is my way of answering that question. Um, you know, I, I have expertise in engineering uh, and some expertise in starting companies and in entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I decided to start a company to use my knowledge of engineering to address uh, the huge challenge that we're that 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 humanity is facing. Uh, when it comes to climate change and air pollution. And are you an optimist in this direction? I'm an optimist in most directions. Um, and I'm an optimist in our ability to 
uh, mitigate climate change and be resilient against its effects. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I think that the world is coming around. Uh, and I think the world is coming around at a faster pace than most people believe. The, th the thing about humanity is if we don't see it, it's hard mm -hmm. for us to really take action. Uh, and the thing about climate change is we're starting to see it, but but the the rate at which we we directly see the effects is going to increase very dramatically in the short term, right? In the next five, ten mm -hmm. years. Uh, and that I believe will cause will cause us to rally around finding solutions. So I'm an optimist. Uh, but it's it's going to be really hard and, and it's going to be very painful. So tell me some of the indicators that you think um, that you say are showing that the world is coming around. Well, what I find out in the marketplace is, you know, my company, Skyven, we are 100 percent focused on reducing carbon emissions. And we mm -hmm. do that by uh, helping our customers save money. So it's the. It, 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 you know, help the world and and save money and help yourself. Right, falls uh, and, under the ESG yeah, umbrella. Exactly, exactly. You know, the double bottom line. So, the thing about it is, in the industrial sector, an industrial manufacturer is busy making product, mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, a cost to even considering doing something that is not related to making product and mm -hmm. reducing lost energy is not directly related to making product. You could waste all the energy in the world. As long as a product comes out at the end of the day, you know, as a manufacturer, you've, you've done what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has been a barrier for adoption in the past. Uh, and what we're seeing is we're seeing that starting to change where yeah it's absolutely it's absolutely critical that we do save our our industrial customers money but mm -hmm. um the fact that the industrial customer can also do something good for the world and help address climate change at the same time that is a we're finding that now to be a motivator uh whereas before it wasn't even worth mentioning now now it's hey yeah we absolutely want to be good people uh we absolutely see the need for this. At the same time, it does no one any good if we run ourselves out of business. So we need to save money at the same time. We can do both. Sign us up. And I'm speculating here, but that also that's also a good message back to their stakeholders and shareholders too, is that we're we're saving money and we're doing, you know, good essentially in the world. Absolutely. And that that you know, on a broader scale is what I see as a sign that you know, on a, on a macro, you know, humanity scale that attitudes are shifting because it's mm -hmm. not just an individual who, you know, may have a particular love for the environment or may not in a, inside an industrial plant, but mm -hmm. rather it's pressure that, that the industrial plant is getting from their customers, from consumers. They're getting from their board of directors. They're getting from Wall Street. It's coming from all sides, pushing them towards sustainability. Uh, mm -hmm. And that means that society cares. So it sounds like you're providing a lot of answers to their questions. Um, let me ask you a question. You have a pretty traditional educational background. Why entrepreneurship? Well, I, I've always been been interested in in building and doing something new. You know, I consider mm -hmm. myself a creator. Mm -hmm. uh, and the creation of new new value, both from a social standpoint, which is, you know, in our case, climate change, mm -hmm. uh, as well as new value from an economic standpoint, creating new jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the creation of that, I find really, really exciting. I find it motivating. It's a reason for me, one of the reasons to get out of bed and put my all into my work every day. Uh, and so it's a really good fit for me. And then the other reason is I, just by my personality or by my, by my nature, I have a, a comfort level with 
ambiguity and uncertainty. <laughs> I've heard I've heard it called VUCA, volatile, uncertain, chaotic, and ambiguous. Yes, exactly that. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, that's not so. So I, you know, I consider myself that that's you know, both a, a blessing and a curse, of course, um, as most Agreed. things are. Um, but I focus on the blessing piece of it, and mm-hmm. uh, and I, and I that has also driven me towards entrepreneurship because starting a new company produces lots and lots of uh, of VUCA, you know, lots of volatility, uncertainty. Uh, it's hard to know what's going to happen the next day. There's tons of risk involved uh, mm-hmm. just by its very nature. And to me, that I feel at home uh, in that type of environment. Uh, and that's why it's a good fit. I love the fact that you said you feel like you're a creator. I think, I think, I think a lot of us, in fact, all of us to some extent are creators. I think, um, you know, many suppress that side of them. I think as human beings, we were born to create. So I, I, agree. Re- I really, I really appreciate that you've seen that side of you. So what's next for Skyven? Where are you now and where do you see yourself five years down the road? Well, thanks for asking. We're we're at a really exciting crossroads right now. Uh, when, you know, I, I started Skyven in 2013. Uh, that mm-hmm. was six years ago at this point. Wow! And it has been a long road of um, of growth, both for myself and for the organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've now gotten to the point where we have. Uh, a, a project pipeline with some of the biggest names, you know, lot, lots of, of companies and brands that I have and most people have in their houses on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're really well poised to start to produce the real impact in the world that I've been been dreaming about and, and working towards for the past six years. Uh, mm-hmm. So the future to me holds um, dramatic reductions in CO2 emissions in the industrial sector uh, mm-hmm. and extending that beyond just us. Um, you know, fr- from where I started this conversation, the industrial sector is an area that is responsible for tremendous environment environmental impact, but mm-hmm. yet is a little kind of on the periphery of our our site as society. And I think a success case that we're building with Skyven will uh, add a lot of visibility, shed some light onto the opportunities in the industrial sector uh, to improve sustainability. You know, I, I think you're so right. I think it goes back to that um, that piece you mentioned earlier. You know, we can see the cars, we can see the trucks, we can see smoke tax, stacks, we can see cows, we can see the the obvious footprints. But you know, like you said, if we go out to the edge of town and we see manufacturing, we don't think about the the amount of utilities or the amount of energy being used by the manufacturing process, and you know how much of it can potentially be saved. I mean, you mentioned numbers at the beginning there, twenty to thirty percent of all fuel that and it, it's a that's a huge huge number so you know essentially what you're saying could impact as you said into the billions of dollars of savings in energy and dollars for these companies yeah absolutely so arun if there's one piece of advice you could impart to the audience what would it be my advice to the audience is think about about what you're passionate about and and what you can do to make the world a, a more just, more sustainable, a better place, right? You know, as, as cheesy as that sounds, it's a real thing. We all have passions. We all care about something and we can all make something better and, and go after that and, and find a way to make it better in a way that produces real value and, and go after that. Um, I think if, if more people did that with their lives, uh, I think the the world would be better for it, uh, and I think each each of their lives would be better for it too. So I think it's a real win win. Arun, I so agree with you. You know, you said cheesy, and perhaps it's cliche, but you know, there's a great book about everything I learned. I learned in kindergarten. I think if we all kind of go back to the basics, we'll we'll realize very very quickly that the reason that these basics, you know, do good, be good, have lasted 
across time is because they're true. So whether it's cheesy or cliched, there's a reason for that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a real thing. So there you go, Mr. Arun Gupta, the doctor, the PhD, who's now an entrepreneur and saving us, the planet, one step at a time. Thank you so much, Arun, for your time today. And we look forward to catching up with you down the road. Thank you, Raj. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. 